Hello everybody, this is a quick video to set up Jack um, Audio Collection Kit on Windows in order to um, uh, link Pro Tools with Dolby Atmos Renderer. Uh, so this will set up 129 channels between the two applications as a kind of Windows alternative to the Mac Dolby Atmos Audio Bridge. Um, so first step you're going to need to do is definitely just give this a quick read if you can. Um, it goes through some of what we're going to cover. Unfortunately, this is why people do get confused because there's not really a a full um, explanation of how to set up um, this many channels with Jack um, by default. Um, and it's not the easiest program to use either, to be honest. Um, it's a little bit finicky, but essentially you're going to go to the downloads um, page and download and install Jack. I think you can uh, get to that point um, relatively pain free um, when you've got that far you'll have somewhere in your programs files you'll have this QJack control icon um, that's the main uh, sort of entry into starting Jack and stopping it and stuff like that which we'll come on to in a minute but before any of that you need to find this programs files directory where Jack lives and go to this Jack router folder um, and find Jack router any so for me, it's in this Win64 because it's a 64-bit system. I'm pretty sure everybody's will be these days. Um, you're going to right-click on that and click Properties. Chances are that that's going to be read-only because we're in a Programs Files folder here in Windows, and Windows isn't going to like the fact that you're changing files in Program Files. So you're going to have to deselect read-only and click Apply on that, and that should give you right access so that you can edit this file. If it doesn't, you're going to have to go into security tab here and set up a user uh, with full control or whatever. I think just deselecting read only should be enough. So if we open that file, uh, file up, um, this has already been changed by me, but you will see that as four there, four channels of input and four channels of output. That's kind of the default because um, obviously it's kind of designed that when you first install it, it's just a minimal setup. You can you can add more channels using the kind of Jack Aware applications themselves, um, but neither Pro Tools or um, or Dolby Atmos Render are, are native Jack uh, applications, so they have to kind of be told how many channels there are. So in here, you're going to set that to 129. That's 128 objects or 100, 128 objects and bed kind of connections um, and just leave float sample one that just means it's 32-bit float audio that's all that is I think ignore auto connect you don't need to worry about any of that that's um, unrelated to what we're doing um, and yet and uh, save that so just file save control s whatever just worth double checking go back into it again and reopen it just to make sure that it's definitely saved sometimes it's not obvious that a file's not um, actually saved even though you've just edited it um, so that's the first step that's very critical that step without that you'll never you'll never really get um, uh, anywhere um, if we go back to our page here so we've now got I'm already running Jack because I've got a record OBS um, and so I've already got OBS um, is this is this is the graph showing all the connections I've already got OBS running to record this video um, the mic goes directly to OBS so that's why there's no incoming connection but um, essentially I've I've already set this up but what you'll need to do is when you when you open QJack control that will open this window here um, and the first thing you're going to need to do is go into setup and choose your interface so that's generally going to be whatever interface has got all your uh, multiple outputs on um, for the speakers um, or if it's just headphones and just your uh, headphone device um, so select that there uh, obviously for Dolby Atmos it's nearly always 48k um, sample rate 512 buffer um, I would advise you also set everything on Windows to 48 um, 512 buffer as well where possible um, even though the ASIO is kind of just a one-to-one -one kind of connection nothing else can use it when you do set 
the Windows audio to 48, that means you can then use ASIO and um, say Wasapi or WDM all at the same time. Uh, so it basically means that you, say you opened up YouTube and your browser, YouTube could still play out of this Apogee device, just not through ASIO or through Jack. It would just it would just get there through Windows. Uh, that that can be quite useful sometimes because sometimes you don't want to keep um, flicking between two devices all the time. But uh, you won't you won't get audio out of the Windows system if the Windows system isn't the same sample rate as the ASIO system. So just a little tip there. Um, so that's critical. Obviously, that matches what you actually want to hear audio through. The other really critical thing is audio here where it's playback only, capture only, duplex. That must match your audio interface. So for this little Apogee device I'm using, that can only play back audio. It can't record audio. Um, most of the time, you're probably going to be on this duplex mode. So that's duplex mode is a device that records and plays at the same time. Um, which is probably going to be most decent interfaces to be honest um, for now I'm just on playback only so that's that server prefix this is just the startup commands for for Jack um, I think by default you'll probably see this Jack uh, minus S minus X win me this is just setting up the MIDI side of it as well which I don't use the MIDI side so you'll you'll um, just have Jack D minus S um, and you'll click apply here. Leave everything else as default. Everything else here is default um, as far as I'm aware. Um, and when you've done, when you've, I don't know, is it gonna, I'll just discard those changes. Um, when you've done that, you'll have a, you'll be able to click this start button here and that will start, if we just look at the messages on here. Uh, so where I started it was here. So Jack, Jack starting here. And this is the command that it's it it runs when it starts. I'm not I can't start this in real time for you because I'm recording through it at the moment. Um, but essentially, the graphical interface is just setting up all, all these commands here to to work. And all going well, you'll see stuff like connection graph changes, and that is because in the graph we've it's found OBS and uh, this system device here. This is actually the Apogee, so you could always rename that if you wanted. Um, I'm not outputting OBS to the Apogee at the moment. I'm just recording the mic through it. But later on, um, I need to also record the audio from the Dolby Atmos renderer. So I'll, I'll output the Dolby Atmos renderer to the OBS um, so that I can hear. So you can hear that, sorry. Um, so that's that. Um, okay, all going well. If we just go back to this window, just explain a couple of things. Um, this DSP load, that's how many um that's how much uh, cpu jack's using for these 129 connections and the uh little zero bracket zero here this is the x run count this is how many samples haven't got from kind of a to b basically through jack uh, if this starts going red and increases you're losing samples somewhere which means um potentially glitches and stuff so uh, generally that that should just remain green and zero. Um, so that's that. Um, you don't need to keep all of these windows open. You can close this as well if you wanted. It would just run in the taskbar if you uh, closed it. Um, so if, I think for now, if we just open up the graph, I'll try and keep this on top by a little shortcut. Yeah, that's on top. And we open up the Dolby Atmos renderer. Um, there you go, you see Dolby Atmos render is now, so we've got OBS running. It might flash a couple of times as it's kind of connecting. Now I've got Dolby Atmos render and you probably just heard a bit of a click there. So the Dolby Atmos renderer is now outputting um, to the Apogee. And that is basically these two channels here. Uh, if you go to file, um, let's just get this over here. If you go to File, Settings, Audio Driver, you're going to select ASIO. Can't select Jack because it's not Jack Aware application, but it is aware of ASIO, so you can use the Jack Root ASIO drivers. Um, 48K sample rate, obviously. It should this should automatically populate anyway. Um, so that's that. Um, 24 frames per second is 
what you'll need to sync your LTC with. Um, so that's quite important. Um, for now, we're not even going to bother with all the LTC stuff. It's not important to this. I'm just monitoring in, in stereo. Um, and that's going out to my Apogee. What I'll also do is, because I want you guys to hear it, I'm going to put that into OBS as well. Um, so hopefully that will record. Um, so that's the renderer sorted. Uh, just minimize the renderer. Um, next step is Pro Tools. So we'll open Pro Tools now. Um, hopefully Pro Tools is a bit more finicky in terms of it doesn't seem to remember connections sometimes. Looks like it's remembered it now. We've now got 129 channels in Pro Tools as well. Um, it's automatically connected because in the QJack control here, um, we've got don't restrict self-connect requests. We could have fail self-connect requests so these lines wouldn't automatically get connected but Pro Tools is a little bit fussy about that um so i would you can play around with it um that's all i can say um so i don't want pro tools going straight out to the apogee which is what that's just set up so we're going to disconnect disconnect the apogee, apogee from pro tools but what we do want is obviously we want all of these 129 channels of pro tools to be going into the uh, the dolby atmos renderer so if we just if you just uh, click and drag a rectangle down all of these so you get get all of them selected and then click connect here that'll collect connect all of those devices so you can imagine got pro tools here all of these connections are essentially running through jack through this qjack control or qjack uh, uh, jack server sorry and then they're inputting jack's inputting them into the dolby atmos renderer dolby atmos renderer is then going out to um OBS which is recording the video and I've just got to reset this up so that I can hear it as well um, so that's pretty much the setup you see that the DSP load is is risen now so we've got 20% DSP for these 129 channels you can minimize it by only connecting however many connections you're using in terms of objects um, but for this purpose we'll just leave them all connected uh so that's all looking good uh let's get um let's get pro tools started up i'm going to uh, close this down so we don't need to see this anymore uh we're going to open the dolby atmos demo um it's complaining about loads of things not connected um it's complaining about me not having plugins um i'm not too bothered about any of this um uh, so we've got a session open. I'll just go back to our graph, make sure nothing's disconnected. Yep, nothing's disconnected. Um, obviously, in reality, you might not have Jack already set up, so you're going to go to uh, set up hardware, Jack router. Uh, make sure that's connected. Um, you are going to need to go to I.O. Um, this is already set up because it's a saved session already. I think in the Dolby Atmos, you're going to have to select external renderer put a tick here um, if it finds the next zero Dolby Atmos renderer uh, you'll see an address there which is just your computer name dot local and if it's connected it, you'll get a green light and what we should see if we go to the renderer now we can now see all of the objects of this session are automatically connected I don't know why this runs when the playback's not running here and I don't even have LTC but that seems to be just how uh, the renderer works. The renderer is pretty low, 16, 15%. So that's um, that's uh, not going to be an issue. Um, if we go back to Pro Tools. Um, you prob it never seems to remember its own output path for some. It's, it's sorry, it's internal routing. It doesn't seem to ever remember this. Um, I don't know why. Um, so it looks like in this project we've got the bed. Which is, I don't think it's actually used the bed in this project. Um, and then we've got these objects here. So I'm just going to have to quickly set these up. So we've got 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 
Five thirty six, I think that's so that should be I don't know why they call it mapping to output, you're really mapping the output to the input in my opinion, but anyway. Uh that should be that. So if we go back to Dolby Atmos renderer um, just keep that window open so we can see it. And I click play, we should hear you'll at least see something happening. If it, you can't hear it, it's because I've messed up the routing. But I think uh I think everything's output into OBS and I should hear it so uh, yeah if we click play hopefully you can hear something but uh, we've definitely got communication we've got audio coming through we've got audio coming out um, so I think that is all working um, and that's the basic setup um, some of the problems you might have is um, this uh, your main program files folder here you might want to set that to um, uh, if, I should, if I just go into it um, uh, if I can find it um, in fact we can do it from here you might want to right click on so this is just a shortcut to it but you might want to right click and make sure that it's not a read only folder as well um, that can sometimes help I think uh, but I think by default that that should work but I think I probably that should be set to read only by default so you might need to uncheck that that's the only other thing I can think of that you're gonna have trouble with if you really have trouble then probably be wise to turn off all of um, your internet connection um, and like the usual disable all your firewalls all the security stuff smart screen real-time um, antivirus and all that stuff um, because Jack is a network kind of based thing it's um, it's a little bit more security kind of um, sensitive uh, for Windows to run it um, so I think that's another area where people get a bit stuck but I'm pretty sure I've got a standard security setup on this laptop, so it should all be working um, for you after following this guide. I hope that helps. If uh, it doesn't, then um, leave some comments and I'll keep a track of this video for a few days and, um, and answer them and try and resolve any issues you might have. Um, I think that's it. Uh, happy, uh, happy jacking. All right. Cheerio. Bye-bye.